Hey, come on over here. Check out what we're doing here. I mean, we're in a weld shop. This is where the work gets done. Come on in here. So all of your classes that you're going to take, stick classes, MIG classes, flux core classes, TIG classes, they're all going to have projects. And one of the projects that you're going to use in most of the classes is what we call a cluster. So it looks like this. It's a T-joint, it's a lap joint, and it's that V-groove but with backing joint that we have been going through in our other videos. So what you have is a weld here, you have a weld here, a weld here, a weld there, and a weld there. So what I'm going to do right now is just show you how to tack these things up. Depending on the process, depending on um, where you're at with these clusters, because there's some different variations of them, but your print and your procedure will have the length and the thickness of the pieces on here. Some of them are thinner material, some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. You just have to pay attention to the bill of materials. So these are saying these are 10 inches long, 12 inches long, these pieces are. Now today, for video purposes, because I have them sitting here and I don't want to waste metal, I'm just using six inch pieces. So these are all six inch pieces. You're going to be probably tacking up 10, but it doesn't change the sequence and how they're tacked. It doesn't change. The welder doesn't care if it's 10 inches or 6 inches. So we're just going to take a minute and show you how to tack these things up. Whether it's super critical for these to be perfectly tacked up and perfectly straight and everything really nice, you should try to do that every time because that starts to develop habits. That starts to develop habits and as you get through this program and you get to some of the harder welds, those little things like grinding mill scale off and making sure it's square and true and distortion and all that is going to make a big difference in your welds. But for right now you're just getting started. So here's what we're going to start with. I've removed the mill scale. Probably for practice purposes, it's not a great big deal, but again, it's a good habit to get into. It's just a good habit to get into. The cleaner the metal, the better the weld. I have another, but with backing weld that's going to be part of this. I've removed the mill scale, removed the mill scale. This is the same weld that we've gone through in our other video series about how to prep these up and do the, do the bend test. So what I'm going to start with is nice little tacks. I have these two pieces of metal sitting on my table just because it makes them flatter. Even one piece can make a much flatter surface because these tables aren't real flat. So what I'm going to do is bring these in. I have my MIG gun ready. I'm going to set it up in the middle, make a nice T-joint, and I'm going to tack it right on the end here. Now if I tack it from one side or the other, whichever side I tack it on is going to pull this thing this way. So I want to tack it right on the end. Watch that camera lens so we don't burn you up. I have a nice little tack right on the end and you can see it's still pretty much 90 degrees. That's super critical, but again, these are good habits to start developing. I'm going to move that one over just a little bit. Make it nice and square. We're going to put a little tack right on the end. Here we go. So I've got my T-joint tacked up, and this is actually my T-joint and my lap joint. The cool thing about these clusters is, this particular cluster, is there's also different material thicknesses. So you have to do your welds a little bit different. Different material thicknesses and different processes. So let's go through this one one more time. I have my bevels facing down. We're working with the back of the plates. We need a quarter inch gap. I know my material is a quarter of an inch. So I slide that material in there and very carefully lift it up. I take the ground spot, put it down on the back, because this has to be a quarter of an inch opening. If I move it around, I want to check it again. I put it down on the back, I hold this thing down, and I come in and put a tack. I come on this side and put a tack. I come in on this end, one more little tack, and another tack here, and when I flip this over, I now have that V-groove but with backing weld, okay? 
Now my T-joint needs to go on here. I haven't removed the mill scale here yet, but we'll do that because it's a good idea to. Let me grab my grinder real quick. And we'll pull that mill scale off there real quick just because it's a good idea. The cleaner the metal, the better the weld every time. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to overlap this piece because I have to have an overlap on both sides. Okay? I'm going to come in and tack it right on the end. And I'm going to come in and tack it on the other end. And this ends up being what we call a cluster weld. These pieces may be a little bit wider. They may be a little bit taller. They may be a little bit longer. It all depends on your print and your process, what you're doing. But now I have, this is good use of metal because now I have a weld here. I have a weld here, a lap weld and a lap weld. I have a T-joint and a T-joint and then this. And these will be done in flat position, horizontal position, vertical position, and overhead position. So these clusters are worth taking the time. Grind the mill scale off, make sure everything's square and true. You don't have to get a micrometer out right now. Just make sure everything eyeballs up nice and as you tack these things up working through the process and working through your different classes, they'll get nicer and nicer and nicer. Just remember everything builds from your foundational skills. The better you get the foundational skills, the faster your learning process is going to happen, the better your learning process is going to happen. Don't skip over the steps. Some of these things we do get a little bit boring, they get a little bit tedious. There's a reason for that, because it develops good habits in the weld lab. So we can turn you into a professional welder.